it looks like it's happening. A third search for the missing Malaysian airliner, MH370, has begun. A ship belonging to the marine survey company Ocean Infinity has left the island of Mauritius. It left around Friday morning local time. It has set out steaming towards a remote stretch of the southern Indian Ocean where the plane is believed to have crashed after going missing 11 years ago. The ship is expected to arrive in the search area around February 23rd. It will then deploy sophisticated underwater drones to start scanning the seabed, a process that will probably take several weeks, maybe more. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the vessel that's gonna carry out the search, the equipment that it's going to use, and when we can expect to see results. I talked in an earlier episode, episode 25, about how late last year the Malaysian government had reached a deal with Ocean Infinity to restart the search. This will now be the second search by Ocean Infinity and this third search overall. The deal was that they would scan 15,000 square kilometers of seabed and if they're successful, the Malaysians will pay Ocean Infinity $70 million. I talked about where they're likely to search and why. In the next episode, episode 26, I also discussed claims by certain well-known commentators who claimed that they had inside information that the search had already been called off. I was pretty skeptical of those claims at the time. I asked why, given how, what a bad track record of accuracy those commentators had in the past, we were still continuing to listen to them. Uh, I think that skepticism is even more merited given what we know today. As I said, the search is on. It hasn't been called off. This is good. The third search is happening. Okay, let's talk about what we know. Really, the go-to source of information on all this has been Kevin Rupp, who's been maintaining a Facebook page called Ocean Infinity News and Updates. Uh, let me put a link here. He's been posting marine tracking information from a company called Big Ocean Data. Basically, they have access to satellite-based marine tracking data that you have to pay for. Now, the free kind of marine data tracking that anyone can get, like me, I don't pay for it. And it just gives you ground-based tracking information. That means if a ship is far from shore, it doesn't show up anymore. So Big Ocean Data is paying for it. Kevin's paying for it. I'm not sure exactly who's paying for it but he is sharing this information with everybody and it's a really great resource. So thank you to Kevin for doing that. He's also been overlaying with other data. I'll, I'll show you some of these images. As we've talked about, Ocean Infinity has eight of these high-tech ships called Armada 78. They're about 250 feet long. Two of them have been traveling around the Indian Ocean and so They've been really the focus of people's attention. Speculation has been rife as to which, which of them was going to be tasked with the search. That has gradually come into focus in recent weeks. Both of these ships arrived in Mauritius early in February. It's likely that equipment was transferred between them at that time. One ship then sailed back to South Africa, and then the other, its name is Armada 7806, left port and sailed about 20 miles north of Mauritius and spent a few days earlier this week sailing back and forth, probably deploying and retrieving AUVs to make sure that everything was working right and that the instrumentation was all calibrated and so forth, basically doing trial runs before heading way out into the ocean where it would be hard to fix things. Something very similar to this happened in the run-up to Ocean Infinity's first seabed search in 2018, which was conducted by a ship called Seabed Constructor that had sailed out of Durban, South Africa. It basically left port, headed towards the, the search area, but then stopped and was running tests offshore before it proceeded to carry out the search. The way that we could tell this was that on this satellite-based marine tracking, you could see the ship doing these squiggle kind of search patterns. And so those of us that are quite interested in this were on tender hooks as 7806 was going back and forth about 20 miles north of Mauritius, wondering if these sea trials would end with the boat going back to port or heading out to this search area. Well, Thursday night, 
local time for me, East Coast here in the U.S., Friday morning in Mauritius, we got our answer. Kevin Rupp reported that the ship was sailing in the direction of the search area at 10 knots. Its marine tracking data showed that its destination was offshore Australia with a slated arrival time of February 23rd. So nine days from today, which is currently, as I'm recording this, February 14th, 2025. Based on a little logical inference, it seems that the Armada 7806 is carrying three cutting edge AUVs that are a bit like free ranging torpedoes that they work together in pack to image the seabed using side scanning sonar. There's a very sophisticated, uh, it's been seven years since the last Ocean Infinity search. And in that time, uh, Ocean Infinity has developed what it says is the largest fleet of deep water AUVs in the world. And surprisingly, somewhat surprisingly, the new fleet of ships that it's built aren't optimized to deploy them. Instead, they're going to operate out of um, what have been described as container hangars. These are basically portable deployment facilities that can be moved from ship to ship as needed. This picture comes from Victor Ionello, who had put it on his website. It's worth noting that the ship's current track doesn't really give us any visibility on where it will begin the search. It's on a heading of 140, which means to the southeast, which would take it pretty far south of any plausible search area. This probably has to do with the fact that there's a lot of very powerful storms currently raging around the Indian Ocean, and the ship will definitely want to plot a route to avoid them. Given that it's been seven years since last Ocean Infinity Search, a lot of new technology has come online since then, not least artificial intelligence. It will be really interesting to see how quickly they're able to complete those 15,000 square kilometers they've agreed to search and whether they'll decide to go beyond it. My own two cents is that I bet they do go beyond it. That's not based on anything more than my own gut. And the fact that during their last search, they wound up going well beyond what they originally said that they were going to do. And just the human quality that, you know, if you've come all this way and you haven't found it, why not look a little more? I don't think that given the advance in technology, it will take that much time. Maybe a month? That's my guess. We'll see. Okay, here's the bottom line. There's been a lot of talk, a lot of speculation, a lot of promises. All that's passed. The search is now underway. It's going to happen. And who knows? It may be that the final chapter in the search for MH370 is finally about to be written.